Hey guys, welcome to this video. And in this video, we are going to fix a notification bug, and we are going to fix another bug that I realized. Let me just check. Okay, I have copied it. I have copied a little bit of FFMPEG code. So yeah, the first thing was the not fixing the notification was not coming. Well, basically, what you have to do, all you have to do, you need to go to uh, not the back end section, but the front end section. Here we were saying we were catching the issue. We were catching uh, if something happened to this person. Try catch block in the catch block. Just you know, just call nothing. We were calling in the catch block. We were calling uh, the no not the notification. And in the, when we are aborting the function, when we are aborting the request, we were calling uh, the notification. So both the times the notification was being called and it was not able to process both of that at, at a time. So it never showed us any notification. So solution is remove the notification. Uh, set notification from the catch block itself and other than that we already know how we abort the system we just have a little bit of you know use graph and new abort controller and then we here we're just uh, aborting it if uh, our close everything contains the E which we are only providing once we close the uh, upload button okay then we made that system one second We're saying close everything is going to be equal to true, right? But the thing is, uh, when is it, is it going to be true? Uh, actually, it's going to true be to be true both the times. So let's suppose that uh, the user is uh, you know editing something and setting up his title stuff like that, and he closes it. We're just gonna say, yeah, you close your upload, and we are not here currently having any confirmation. Like, do you confirm? Do you are you sure that you want to close this? Well, we are not asking that for now. So. We can ask it using a you know, confirm thing, okay, or something like that. I guess that should be pretty fine. Also, we'll say constant confirm is going to be a confirm box. We'll just say, do you want to cancel uploading? And here we're gonna say if if confirm, okay. Let's just say if there was no confirmation, then we'll say just return with uh, this thing. So I copy this. I'm gonna go to this one. We'll say return this thing. Otherwise, otherwise do this. All right. Good. Otherwise, we wanna, uh, you know, abort our current controller, and then we wanna show the, show the notification and stuff. Well, we will see about that thing also. Okay. One second, guys. Let me just copy this code. I had written this actually. You know what? I had, I already made this video, but my electricity my electricity just went out and. Uh, the video was lost so that's why I'm just remaking this video but it should be pretty fine for you I will explain you every single thing that I did before so what is happening for now there's a bug the bug is basically we're saving the preview here we're just saving the preview 1 by 50 FPS uh, per video but how about the video is only containing 30 FPS then basically we will not save any preview right we're basically not setting, saving in nothing we're just having a blank stuff like that or we are saving nothing so to exactly fix the issue, what we have to do, we need to first of all extract uh, the FPS out of the video. We need to see how much FPS a video has. So for that, what I I did a little bit of research and I found we can use first of all the executable function. This is a little bit of code. This is a FF probe. This is like you know a uh, function of FFmpeg, and this little bit of code will actually uh, get the extract the FPS out of uh, the video. It, it will extract how many total FPS the video contains. Here at the end, we need to provide our video uh, path. We're going to say video path, and here we'll have then our error, then our std out, then our stdr, which, which we don't need. You may notice this underscore. It just basically means we don't need it, so we're just keeping it underscore something like that because we are not going to use stdr anyway. So now we have, did we import or something that's not usable? Okay, that's good. 
now we have this thing so basically the SD out is going to return us something like you know let me show you it's going to probably return us something like uh, 30 divided by 1 or maybe 2000 divided by 1100 depending upon the length and the how many total frames the video actually contains what do we have to do here yeah, let me just actually say console the log over std out so you exactly get the thing what we are actually doing Yeah, dev. Okay, some issues next config. My bad. Node mod. CD server. Node mod. Let me go to localhost. Well, you may notice the image is not correct because I need to uh, give it a correct URL. I just messed up the URL a little, little bit. But don't worry, guys. We're going to set up that in this video. Let's say we upload this video. Video has been uploaded, and uh, here you can see we got 30 by 1. This is the FPS of the video. Let's say we upload a bigger video. We upload a bigger video like this one. Alright. Processing may take a little bit of time. Video has been uploaded. We go back. We see here we have 60 by 1. So I told you already it depends upon that how many FPS the video has actually. So that video was 60 FPS per second and this video is uh, 60 FPS per second the previous one was 30 FPS per second. Alright, so what are we actually going to do? We'll actually first of all have a eval thing. So eval will actually know if this is 60 by 1 we will actually let it divide by 1. Okay, whatever we want to do. We'll say constant FPS is equal to eval of our std out so eval is doing like you know if we give it a string of containing 50 plus 10 it will give us back 60 so eval will actually uh, you know extract the expressions out of the string and do whatever it has to do that's the use of eval and we don't just want that thing we we don't want all of the fps's right we just want let's say we want 5 to 10 FP, uh, frames out of this thing so what are we going to do for that thing we're gonna say just divide whatever we get out of it by five, and at the end we'll say math of seal. So math of seal will just say you know, okay, we got all the things. We divided by five. Now we have few decimal places. The math of seal will say, okay, if you are fifty eight point two, just make yourself fifty nine. If you are ten point one, just make yourself uh, eleven. If you are ten point nine, just make yourself eleven. We're just saying, yeah, if you are in the decimal place anywhere, just Move on level up, okay. We will not, we are not going to say math.floor, which means if you're 10.9, make yourself 10. So that's the use of uh, math.floor and the math or seal. Now, here instead of saying 1 by 50, we'll say get frame, take the you know, uh, take the screenshot of out of the video after every what FPS we have here. Let's say we had 60, we divided 60 by 5, uh, that gives something like a name. 60 by 5, I mean 15, I don't know, 15, is it 15? Yeah, I guess it's probably 15. So we are saying, yeah, take one screenshot out of, out of, you know, after every 15 FPS. So at the end, we'll have few FPSs, few screenshots there in the previews. You can see in this small video, it this was, was a small video, and it should occur, you know, some error occurred, because the GIF, because the preview was not successful, it was bad preview. We were not setting, uh, we we're saying just 1 by 50, it was not making any sense. At that moment. Now, if I try to upload a small video again, as an example, to show if it's working or not, let's go to preview. You can see a little bit playing. Not much. It's not playing much of a thing, but it's a little bit of playing. Let's try to upload another video, which is going to be this one. Uh, my channel logo intro, actually. Little bit, little bit, little bit. 
Now let me just try to upload another video, that one we have already uploaded before, the big one. Okay, let it process the video. So let's do one thing. Once we are you know completing this thing, we wanna get rid of these things here. We wanna say processing video, something like that, okay? And this is the process video. Opening a little bit of preview, doing these things, doing these things, doing these things, doing these things, and doing these things, and restart. You can see it just restarted itself. Okay, now it restarted. So you can it, we are showing it quite a few frames and then we are just restarting back. We are showing quite a few frames and then we are restarting back. Alright? Uh, maybe we want to make uh, this 5 a little bit more like 7 or 8. I'm not sure. I think 8 should do it. Let's try to put a small video again. Okay, I mean it's it's fine. Not the worst case I've ever seen. Not the best one. You could have even said uh, mad floor. Let me get the FPS here. So the FPS after every these things. Oh, basically, the more we divide, uh, the less the distance will become. Let's make it see. Let's say not eight divided by three. So now the preview will have less frames than we expected to have because we're taking less frames out of less time, right? Same video. Basically now it only has one frame. Okay? It will not it's not just moving because we're just saying, yeah, I'll just not take much of the things, right? Uh, I think four should do it. Or it's not too much, not too low. If it moved on four, and we'll just keep it that way. Nice. We're just keeping four there. Nice. So yeah, this is a sweet point, and uh, I guess every single thing is pretty much correct. Okay, nice. Anything that we don't need here? Nope. We need everything. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Now, what we'll be doing? Course origin. This is about database URL. This is access. token expires after 15 minutes. That's correct. Now, let's do one thing. Let's go to video upload. And uh, once the video processing has been become finished. Name size start upload, otherwise, it's going to be this. Well, there is there is going to be condition for you also. I want to show you guys only once. Progress is less than 100. I want to show this. I also want to show. Processing. Okay, let's see how it look like. Um, we may need to upload a bigger video. Okay, processing video. No. Progress num then. Let's refresh. Okay, did we delete the video? We should close this thing. Yeah. Nice. Uh, start the upload. None. Processing video. None.
But I'm gonna show this. Well, the progress num is basically, I guess. Yeah, it's the number. Processing video, we try to close it now, and uh, it will just say confirm is not a function. Yeah, basically, confirm is only used in a. Uh, we can only use it in use effect statements, so yeah. I guess that's not the case for now. Otherwise, confirm is a thing. Now, let me show you that. Thing is. You can see it asked me this thing. So basically, I was thinking to do something like that. But it's okay if they don't want to add something like that. Let's try to upload something. Upload cancel. Now we are uploading the video, it has already begun. Upload cancel. Uh, we're just doing final testing. Okay, never mind. Let's go back to this stuff. I'm going to server storage videos. We're just doing a final testing. If everything is working pretty fine here, let's say upload a video. This one. Uploading the video, uploading is done. Now it's processing the video and I close that processing. Okay, okay, so it, it shouldn't matter, right? It shouldn't matter. I close that processing, it's only showing me, yeah, this thing has been done. But basically, what is going to happen? The processing will still complete in the back end, okay? Because the video you, the user doesn't have to really much matter, but really much wait till the processing finish because the processing is going to be. Kind of like a backend thing. Only what we are doing, if you have finished, you know, if you're closing the connection, the user will only not able to see. Okay. Two things will happen. Well, I'm suspecting that the video is not going to be saved in the database. I will say MongoDB database. Databases, I'm going to go to LDN2, videos. I'm not going to delete these many files, so let's take a test. Let me take a look at this one. We are uploading a file, then we are just click, click, uh, you know, when it's the file is processing, when I'm closing the connection. Close the connection right there. Okay, the files get saved here, but it doesn't. Uh, the nothing gets registered in the database. Well, this is a bug that we didn't thought about before, right? Missing console log error, stuff like that. We only save it once we are successfully in this point. Okay, maybe we can do another thing here. Dot on. Uh, connection closed. We don't have to generate the things if it's not being registered in the database. Okay, we don't yet to see the connection closed here. Maybe I call it here. I don't know. I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure though. Shift plus delete.
wait a minute, we need to I need to try it again. I didn't saw what happened. Okay, they call the connection closed by themselves without even we saying something. That means this connection closed isn't a good thing. How about I say about it? Okay, let me just think of a solution and we'll come back. Alrighty, guys, so I was trying a few times and I found the solution. Basically, we have to do nothing. It automatically, you know, once the response is done, it automatically, it just, you know, by itself calls this thing. Yeah. So it doesn't die because we're just having this thing. FFMPG, it just takes some time. It's on the asynchronous level, so it doesn't kill the response at the moment. So, yeah, it does the thing. And it's being stored in the database. That's the point. Okay. Let's try to do one thing. Let me just try to save. Try to pull the video from two sides. Okay. I know this. There is a bug. But it's okay for now. We'll fix the bug later on. Oh, this is a really bad bug. We close two connections, right? And here you can see we have some like that for now. You upload the two video two things at a time. And let's see what happens. You can see it called it called automatically by itself. It called to the request. It is uh sent back some response. So basically it doesn't really matter what we do. It will say over videos in the database, the backend. Well that's the magic processing might take a little bit of while, so it doesn't really matter what we do. Close the request, we keep the request on. Well, that's good to know because we're gonna move ahead now. We have multi user support, right? Now let's set up our home page, this page. Uh, I mean, just like this, uh, this thing for now. I'm gonna set up a real quick set up this uh, something in here. And about the views, I didn't do anything about the views yet, but we'll see about that thing also. We need the views, and we need the comments. Total number of comments. How many are there? Okay. Maybe mm, for storing the total number of comments, like how many people have commented. We have two ways. Either we just say count the thing, the comment section. Otherwise, no. Yeah, that would be better. Counting the thing. No. Good. Let's get rid of this connection about it. Doesn't really do anything here. So what we have to do? We need to just close everything and go to the index.js x. Well, I think you may know this, but I deleted the home.jsx file because we cannot use server side rendering in a component in a child component, so I have to delete the home.jsx and I just copied all the bit code from home.jsx into my index.jsx. So just to use server side rendering in here. What is server side rendering? Well, server side rendering is just basically when the user requests to a page, it will well, in the server itself you load all of the HTML, the dynamic HTML coming data from coming from database and stuff like that, even before the user gets to see the page. So you just give him the total page, you know, his ID login and stuff like that. He will not even notice. He will just think, okay, so this will always there. But it was not. It was made on run. When he called uh, the response, when he called uh, the server, we made the page for him. We just gave him the page. That's the for our server side uh, server side rendering. So it updates the page every every single time user refresh. So yeah, here we just have to say we need to export this function as a. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to just expose this function with the name of constant. We need to say get server side props. 
it's going to it's going to be an asynchronous function and it's going to contain a it's going to give us something like a context back context has the request and the response and the query query is just basically the url we are on okay so we will be you will be using query for you know actually playing the video because the videos are going to have a kind of like a unique id to be played something like that yeah we're going to do that later on so for now we're just having h minus context is equal to this thing blah blah stuff like that okay what we are going to do now i'm just going to say let's let me return empty props so we'll have to return the props like this and these props whatever we you know data we give here we can access that thing here in this file in this index file so what we will be doing we'll just make a new uh, system in the controller we'll be making a new controller here in the video controllers we'll making a we'll make a new file with the name of get uh, videos dot javascript so what we'll be basically setting we'll just say constant get video is going to be an asynchronous function that request is going to have the request and the response we don't care about the request so we'll just keep it as a blank something like that or just say yeah get the videos constant videos is going to be equal to require dollar slash dollar slash dollar slash video here we just have to say whenever we get in response any request this thing we're going to say return response.json status uh, 1 and data is going to be just basically our await videos.find so this thing is basically going to return all of the videos present in our database if there is no video it's going to return null if there are videos it's just going to return this let's make it a little bit more smaller you can make it one liner and get rid of the return thing Something like that, and here we just in constant this thing, blah blah stuff like that. Say module dot export. When we call to get video, I'm gonna say module that exports a. And this thing is going to be a. We can just do these things also. And here we can just say comma. Get rid of constant, and we can use constant for both of them. And this is the shortest code we have written so far, and it feels good. Nice. Get videos is ready. We're gonna say here. Get imp axios. Import axios from axios. Constant. Data is going to be called await. Axios dot get on the URL of. Here we need we need to pass our full URL because we're just getting the server side rendering. We cannot actually use the here in the next config where we are using the right rule. If we're calling this thing, then we just set the destination of this thing. But when we call something in the server side rendering, it doesn't really you know listens to the source or a destination stuff like that. We can try it though, we'll just see what happens. Let's say slash authentication slash get videos. Well, I didn't import it yet anywhere. We have to go into the import. We'll say get slash get videos. Get videos. Get videos. When I add it here in the index, it doesn't have to have any verified token because a non logged in user can also get the videos. Get, get to see the videos. Import it here, not there. Get videos. You can call to the get videos thing. Let's just say what's the log of the data. Return we need to say console log of the data. And let's see what happens. Let's do a refresh. Not found. The request URL was not found on the server. Apache stuff like that. We got a lot of error issues, right? 
So why is that so? Well, that's only because our host URL was incorrect. This is just reading localhost with a port of 3000, not 5000. So what do we do for that? Well, basically, we're going to make a new readme file. We need to save it with the name of .env.local. Okay. Yeah, you can see we already made it because I told you I was making a video. It crashed and we are here now. So make a new environment variable file with the name of .env.local and here we need to save the name of anything with underscore next underscore what was it? One second. I was seeing this reading this blog before. Okay, next underscore public underscore. Yeah, basically, if you just try to you know put your environment variables here, it, they will not they will just show up as undefined in the user end, but they will just show you as defined in your section. So we'll just say next underscore public underscore our variable name is going to be. Uh, let's say server underscore name. Oh, we can say server is going to be equal to here. We'll just define first of all. Our host is going to be http colon slash slash localhost and our port is going to be 5000 for now. Here we can just say dollar host then uh, dollar port. It will just give us our host plus our port colon. Host our host plus our port next underscore public underscore server. So maybe here we just say process dot env dot server plus this thing. Let me do a yarn dev. Let's do a refresh. Okay, what happened now? Okay, let's get rid of this thing. We'll just, the structure here is just calling chaos, calling, you know, causing chaos. Refresh. So we get to see a lot of crap. Let's send this data here. Let's accept it here. Say log data. We'll see what happens. Okay, let me just take a look at this blog one more time. Okay, there's a string still throwing us errors. Server. Let me just try to say console log. In middle server. Undefined, undefined. Project.env.server and it gave us back undefined. Maybe you have to say npm install.env and in this file, I'm gonna say file.env.config like we do in Node.js. Let me here to define it as 
5000. Delete this thing. Beyond dev, final testing coming up. Undefined and uh, empty thing, right? Let me take a look at this. Okay, well, got the bug. We have to call this full variable like this, okay? So if I just go back, I will just go back like that. It is all going to work fine still. And yeah, like we expected to. Great. We need to refresh. It's better. Okay, altering it made get request to the get videos and it got the photo for back. Okay, because it has to be get request, right? I mean basically yeah it does has to be get request. That's okay for just making get request it has to be get request. So we get data object object. Uh we get data object object. You have to get data like that. Good. You can see we got to see something. Now here I go to console. I get to see uh, object object. This object is basically containing my data, and it got, it got uh, you know shown to us two times because we are first of all server loading this thing, and then we're just normally loading this thing. This basically index.js it loads two times. We can just use effect only make it load. No, actually console log this thing one time. So you can see we got two videos. These are two videos with two different things. That's great. Now what we have to do, we have to actually make them show up here. So first of all, to make our preview and the thumbnail actually available to the public, we will not be making the video publicly like that because we will be sending the videos in chunks. But we want the thumbnail and the pre you know preview video to be available. So what do we do for that? Basically, we're gonna go to our index.js file, the main folder here. We need to we need to express. So I'm gonna say. Copy this thing like that. I'm gonna say take it as express. Const express is called this. Okay, why I import express? Because we need to use express dot static route. Uh, static, a file, uh, you know, upload a file. Uh, what do we say? Files, static file serving. So we have to say we have to say get an app dot use on slash thumbnails. If someone goes to slash thumbnail, you know, localhost 5000 slash thumbnails, what he has, what we will, what we are going to show him there. Well, we're going to show him there is uh, actually not require express dot static file. We'll just show him there what we where is the thumbnail. It's in the storage slash thumbnails. We want to show him something like that, and basically it's it's going to do what. If we say thumbnail slash any of the files name here, it's just going to show up in that file. We can do the same for the previews. And we'll just actually test it out right now. Uh, we got that thing right. Do, 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 do. Good. Localhost 5000 slash thumbnail slash. Well, guys, if you see that I've already searched about thumbnails, don't worry. You can see now we get the thumbnail. This is the thumbnail of the video, and we can also get the preview like this. So just copy this thing. You can go to slash preview this thing. Previews. Okay, what's up with this thing? Oh, it is P R E W I E. Slash previews. 
Fiori WIES. Cannot get this file. <coughs> Story slash. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> okay, so they're having your previews as a wishing exposed static story slash previews, and then we should show them the previews, but they're not saying, nah, we are pretty fine, we don't want to show us ourselves a preview. Let me see about this thing in a minute. Okay, we had here the wrong name previews. Let's do a refresh. Oh, what is happening? What is happening? I have no idea. Reviews. Okay. We're seeing we're just saying storage slash oh previews here also. My bad. That's a refresh, so basically we get to see their preview. And that's called static side side uh, serving. So yeah, that's how we do it. Now basically what we have to do, we basically have to send it all the things here okay but for now we're not sending any comments like how many comments are there in total stuff like that because for comment section there's literally nothing we can do currently we are doing nothing for the comments so I will just keep the comment zero as normal okay let's set up other things till then we having the thumbnails right there let's go here we're sending the data we're getting data like there yep currently we're just getting the data so what we're gonna say, we're gonna say here okay we have to say go in this section uh, in the flex strap this one, this one. we we'll say if not actually if, if data, we need to say data.map get the element and get the index let's go down to here okay so just mapping over the data and it will give us uh, all the things we have inside the database first of all let's pick this source here let's say it as our process.env dot next public source plus our e dot thumbnail name what do we get to see here something crashed data dot map is not a function okay it's not a function that's okay let me just see first to what is data I mean I don't know what the data exactly is so how are, are we even going to work with it Let me return something like that. So basically, data is just data and two array. Okay, I can fix this thing. I will just have to say, yeah, get the data like that. And here we're going to say, Axios, get the data. Here we're also passing the data like that. Maybe we can do some like, data is going to be data dot data. Then we exactly should get the data. Right? Yep, right. We will not be getting it two times, so don't worry about that thing. Something like that. Let's do a refresh. We get to see nothing there. Well, Okay, data map. Well, yeah, that's obvious. We're not returning it, basically. We'll just say like that. 
do a refresh each key should have a unique key well that's okay we'll be giving the key but what happened to this thing oh I see I need to some I need to say something like this dollar goes like that you will say in the midsection over that thing slash thumbnail slash this yeah basically just giving us the thumbnail doesn't look the best but doesn't look the worst also okay well yeah it's pretty good our title in associating our title we can say a dot title name of the owner okay name of the owner we didn't thought about that thing before so maybe we can do one thing okay we, I will just do that thing in a minute nine days ago for now let's just send them exactly the data e dot created at I uh, will just say e dot views here I will say zero because we actually don't have nothing to show here e dot views what happened to the views thing? model video Oh, there is nothing like views. Damn it. Type string. Type number. Default is going to be zero. Okay, good. Yeah, that's cool. So now let's delete all of our previous preview video you know, this these video that we uploaded. I'm gonna delete them and uh I'll just drop my database. Videos are just deleted my database, and that's good. Now, what we are gonna do here is basically in the get videos thing, we have to, we don't just have to send them this thing. Okay, guys, after wasting quite a bit of time, I finally realized I shouldn't do this because it's the worst way we can do this. It will be very bad for the memory and stuff like that. So, what instead we are going to do? Uh, in the video model, we're going to ask for the owner ID, owner name. Okay, we're gonna ask for two the, the uh, two extra things, and let's go to let's go where. Where is the Mr. Mil middleware? Uh, authentication. User ID is this. Username is dot username, and then we get the username there. We will be going to the upload video. Okay, we well would say. Constant username will go all the way down. Owner ID, owner name. Let's delete already kept videos and stuff like that, and we we'll go to MongoDB database. And here I want to just delete what I have. I will just basically delete my database. My collection, I mean to say, not database. Okay, good. I'm gonna do yarn dev. And this thing is basically going to resolve all of our problems. Ah! Uh, uh, I'm gonna go all the way back. We will just do it the way we used to do before. 
a right good and uh, in uh, let's go back let's see here. let me upload a video real quick custom thumbnail server error validation failed path owner name is required so what are we giving it owner name well I'm giving it owner name right owner ID owner name oh maybe it's undefined ID Oh, we see user the ID. Basically, we will not, we're never getting this username, right? Um, let's just get rid of this thing. Let's go video upload. Uh, we have to do extra things, but it's worth it. Constant did which is called being equal to require just one token constant is equal to require model slash user and here we're getting the owner name and say constant owner name is equal to await uh, jwt not only jwt we don't need json of token we just say user dot find by id and its id is owner id And uh, we just want the name. Get the username as owner name. We don't need the JSON token. Alrighty, let's give it a try another one. And we'll still keep it kind of like a backup stuff, okay? We'll say here try catch error. And if basically something happened, just found the JSON data zero. Uh, error occurred. Please try again, and we want to delete all the files. Access the unlink, and by now we can have the thumbnail name already, I guess. Thumbnail name, I guess, right? Thumbnail name, yeah, it's already been defined till now. Here we can just say video path, it will be the same thing. Video path, it's just the full path, right? Unlink video path, and this is going to be the thumbnail. Error occurred. Just do it. Show shows the error, and just don't keep the files. As a security measure, we just want to be extra safe. You got me. Upload video done. Username Eldoni. Owner name is Eldoni. Great. Okay. No. I'm late. No, you take this. I should know it. Okay, so let me just close this one. Close it. Basically, now we're getting the video. Okay, status one, we get the data, right? That's cool, that's cool. Now we can just can just increment all of this data again because we did what we have we had to do. E dot views 
created at hero title the thumbnail the source alternative is going to be what is alternative going to be hero title title like do 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 Ready? Owner name. A dot owner name. I do a refresh. Okay, guys, it should have a unique key prop. Let's give it a unique key prop. Well, basically, it's going to be a link. So I want to say import link from next slash link. Okay, now here we'll just say wrap it all around in a link, and edge track is going to be something. My key is just going to be I. Oh no. We're getting the thumbnail right, and basically this is how it's looking like. Not the best uh, thing, not the best way we could have made it, but not the worst one also. So I think we may have, we may give it a little bit of, you know. This being here is the title. The data is not looking the best way, but we will manage. We will just, you know, convert it to K or million stuff like that. You know, it's the views. For now, the comments are being stored normally by ourselves we're just saying zero we'll stay we'll you know later on see that thing also and yeah pretty much it so if someone clicks on this video it should open the video itself it's the owner's name it should be the owner's profile but for now we're just really much dealing with the profile anyway so we're just saying yeah this is what we have this is the video and it should do something test it's just video title hover over it just hover over this shit and it should show you this one uh, we can just reduce this little bit. The margin we have a padding six. Padding six is just a lot. Uh, padding two should do it. Uh, padding three. Padding top should be zero, not not really zero, but very close to the video. Like two difference. Yeah, that much is variable. Three maybe. Okay, I'm not going any further with that. So this is what we are having, and uh, let's suppose, let's say, we want to have some trimming. Okay. If the title is way too long, what do we do with that thing? Say dot slice if its length is around like fifty starting from zero to fifty. I just want to keep the first fifty letters there. If it's more than that, just delete it. Not really 50, let's say 20. Okay? It is gonna get rid of all the things, others. And uh, let's say, first of all, plus the length spread than 20. Then I wanna add. Uh, dot a dot otherwise nothing mm. 
now we're just seeing if the length is greater than 20. Is it actually greater than 20? Four four means it's not. Oh, I think it's just adding them. Oh, yeah, it's just adding them. Let's make it sound like this. Update, refresh, and this is what we get to see. At the end, we have the dots. Okay, do we have space at the end? No. Okay, that's great. We have the three dots, and it just shows. Yeah, it's more further things. Well, that's good. And uh, in the f in the next video, we're actually going to set up this date perfectly, and uh, the comments and views, and then we'll work on actually clicking the video stuff like that. Have a nice day. I will see you in the next.